be. I mean, and forget the question. I know we get occupied. You know, was it a, a, a mob that was spun out? That doesn't matter at that point. What matters at that point is what how do we do, protect what our you, people? What are you doing to secure the facility and protect American lives? So now we find out, at least reportedly, uh, according to Fox News, that there were requests made from CIA operatives on the ground for backup. Does the president find out about that? I would, I would suspect that the director, the, the, the chief of staff and the national security advisor would be immediately looped into those kind of, that kind of information flow. And yes, the president would be apprised. I wouldn't be surprised to see the president remain at the Oval Office or uh, be, be, you know, be in frequent contact in the, in, from the residents to the Situation Room on what was going on. And, and instead, we have a, a much more diffident, aloof, and disengaged image emerged the, thus far. And, and granted, look, we're not getting all the facts. That's the problem. Look, we're eight weeks after this, nearly eight weeks after this, and yet we do not have vital questions answered. And I, I agree with what Britt said. Bias is insidious. If this would have happened with, a, with the previous president on, on, on duty, you can bet the New York Times would have been all over him the next day about, about heading off for a campaign trip, two-day campaign trip to Nevada and Colorado, and you'd have very serious questions raised about what did the president know, what was his engagement. They'd be, they'd be all over the White House press secretary to say, give us the tick-tock of the president's engagement and involvement. What meetings did he have on the night of September 11th? When did he know? When did he know it? What did he know? What did he say? Who did he talk to? What was done? And, and uh, that's why this is all so disturbing can and you, why it's so insidious in the bias. Can you